welcome back to another episode of the podcast about the gospel of yes. Uh, we have the opportunity today to speak with one of my uh, one of my local heroes, to be honest with you, Rick Bird, who's the head men's basketball coach at Belmont University. Now, Rick is, uh, let's just say he's pretty good. He has over 637 career victories as a coach. He has over 500 of those victories at Belmont. Uh, that puts him at a handful, uh, w with a handful of coaches who have uh, over 500 victories at the place where they're currently coaching. I've seen the impact he makes because I've been here long enough to watch the boys that he coached become young men and fathers and professionals in their own right. And I've seen the quality impact that his leadership makes. Oh, by the way, he's an interesting factoid you may not know. For March Madness, the NCAA basketball tournament, uh, Coach Rick Bird was nominated one of the best dressed coaches there by Esquire magazine for his penchant, his style of wearing uh, a sweater vest every time he coaches. It is really a great honor to welcome today uh, Coach Rick Bird. Uh, by the way, Coach, how many sweater vests do you have? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You better ask Cheryl, my wife. She, uh, it's got a, we've got a closet full, and, and uh, so you got to keep uh, keep changing with the styles. I guess Although so. Although sweater yeah. vests don't change a lot, Mike. Mm -mm. So uh, I, that was a, that was a uh, Esquire magazine is usually a little better than that. <laughs> So, was that a conscious choice that you're going to start wearing a sweater vest, or is it one of those things that it, it was just comfortable for Long you? Long time and then... ago, I saw, I watched a, a CM Newton coaching at Vanderbilt, and they, they played Duke, and uh, their whole staff had a sweater vest and a coaching shirt, a short sleeve right. coaching shirt. And and, I, and CM Newton is one of the classiest sure. guys to coach ever, and. Uh, and I thought, well, if they can do that, it's okay to get away from the coat and tie because it is far more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But I, I kept it a little dressier, and and, mm -hmm. and and I don't know, I don't even know when I started or how consistently I did it to begin with, but it just sort of became a thing. To do. Now it's a trademark. You I got, guess you have I to guess. wear one now, no, don't I you? Know, I guess a lot, a lot yeah. of pressure. You know what? Uh, this year at Eastern Kentucky, we had a, a, the the NABC does a. a a suits and sneakers thing right. for cancer, mm -hmm. and uh, so we went with a shirt like this and and uh, sneakers, and uh, and I didn't wear a sweater vest that that night. I, there's three or four times things <laughs> like that I haven't, so I don't I don't worry so much about it. <laughs> what are uh, what are those characteristics uh, that for you define a successful program? Well, I, I think my job here at Belmont, and it's it's my own um, opinion of what my job is or what they should want, and, and that is for our men's basketball program to enhance Belmont University. Mm -hmm. Now, now part of that is winning basketball games and winning championships and advancing the NCAA tournament because the value of that appearance in the NCAA tournament to the university is pretty significant. It is. Way, way out. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the dollars that it brings in because mm -hmm. we get to go. I'm talking about the, the publicity for the that's university. Right, the, the free advertisement. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's a part of it. But, but a big part of it to me is how do the people involved in our program represent Belmont wherever we go and whatever we do. And uh, whether we like it or not, or whether it's even right or not, uh, we're probably the most visible group of the that represents the university, mm -hmm. and um, I just think we we all know we can pick up the newspaper almost every day and see where some college athlete has gotten into a whole bunch of trouble doing something that he or she shouldn't have done, mm -hmm. and that could happen tomorrow. But but we've here at Belmont, but I, I don't think it will. I, I think we've tried to make the choices in our staff, tr certainly in recruiting, to recruit kids with, with character uh, uh, that are going to represent Belmont in a positive way wherever we go. And my favorite thing to this day is uh, even with the NCAA tournament appearances and championships or when folks at a hotel or in a restaurant talk mm -hmm. about what great kids we have and, and how well they acted. And uh, so I think that's a big part of, of enhancing Belmont University. What do you look for when you go recruiting? I look for a good basketball player first. 
and, and if I said different, I, it, because I can go out here and, and walk around and find a bunch of good kids and we'd be over 30 <laughs> uh, with those kids. Uh, but, but, but once we've identified whether they're the kind of basketball player that fits the way we play mm -hmm. and can make us as good or better than what we've been, then it's about so many things uh, that, that make a guy a more effective player, and, and that is an unselfish attitude. Right here in our locker room, the only, the only saying that we have is that it's amazing what can be accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit. Right. And, and if you can find a, if you can put a team full of guys in this locker room that, that put the team ahead of themselves, then you've got a great head start for, for a good team. Uh, we look for kids that are real, real college students. We look for young men that would choose Belmont even if they weren't a basketball player. Uh, and Mike, that's gotten us to, to a 10-year period now where we haven't, in, haven't had any player leave the program uh, for any reason. Grades, just to transfer, in trouble, you name it. And that's a in this day and time, when there's 400 transfers a year in Division One, that's a that's a that's a stat we're we're happy about. You have been at Belmont for just 27 years. We've gone from NAIA uh, and uh, an old gym on the other side of campus to a uh, state-of-the-art facility here in the Curb Center, and now we're. Uh, playing with the big boys in the tournament. How has uh, coaching at Belmont changed and, and what have you had to adapt to? Well you make a good point and I'm sure there, there, are, there are times in your 21 years where, where things have occurred that almost was giving you a new start right. and, and, and we were NAIA for 10 years and we finished with two Final Four appearances the last two years of NAIA would like to have won a national championship and didn't quite get it done but significant success Enough so that you, you start wondering, well, what can we do next? Right. Can we keep this mm -hmm. up? And then all of a sudden, the school makes a decision to go NCAA Division One, and and although it was a difficult process, and I knew we were going to take it on the chin uh, more often than I would like, it, it was kind of a, it was kind of changing jobs, but staying in a place that I mm -hmm. loved. Mm -hmm. And so we so then we had a period of five or six years of being an independent and then then we get in the Atlantic Sun Conference so there's another restart right. and we were there for a decade and, and then we moved to the OVC and, and and there's another form of a restart so I've been really fortunate in that regard uh, and of course anybody that's been around Belmont knows how much it's grown and changed uh, We've tripled the enrollment since I've been here. Doubled it in the last ten yeah, years. The, the, the ACT requirement is so hard, that, <laughs> so high now that, that I was a trustee of a school I couldn't get into. <laughs> well, probably makes makes it the same for me, working at a place that wouldn't let me in school. <laughs> we couldn't be a student. Uh, has is coaching basically the same? It is. At this level. It is, and I I, th I do think, however, that our ability. Belmont helps us so much to attract the kind of young men that I'd like to coach. And, and people talk about it's different. You know, back in the day, kids were paid attention and, mm -hmm. and would run through a brick wall right, yeah, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, our, our kids are still that way. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'm the head coach, and I get to make sure they are. I mean, I, need, I, I get to choose the guys uh, that, that we coach. And... Uh, and so I'd like to think our standards are pretty high, and therefore the the young men. And that, you you talk about why am I still here? The kind of young men that Belmont allows me to attract is a huge reason why I'm still here. If if I went and jumped into the to the BCS level coaching, I'm I'm not, I'm just not sure that I would be made out of the right stuff to take care of some of the things they have to deal with all mm -hmm. the time. I don't, I don't have to check whether my guys are going to class. I don't have to check what they're doing in the hotels when we're on the road. Mm -hmm. I don't have to check what they're doing in the dorms here. I've got complete confidence in the kind of guys that we choose to recruit, and uh, I'm not sure you can do that at the next level. So that wouldn't be your yes? No. No. No, it, it, no I think that's exactly right. I think that that when there was time to consider that, as exciting as it is in mm -hmm. some ways, 
uh, that I knew I was in the right place. The best moment. The best you, moment? You can only tell me one story about Belmont basketball. Wow. I, I, can, I, I don't think I can pick one, but, but it, would come, it would come down to two. Both of them involve our, our, our travel Lipscomb. And, uh, <laughs> back in 1989, uh, we'd never been to the NAI National Tournament at all at mm -hmm. Belmont, and uh, Lipscomb was 38 and one, and and uh, we went over to their gym, and Joe Bailing scored 58 points. Wow! And uh, we upset them, and we got to go, and they didn't get to go because there were no at-large bids, and so their season ended 38 and two. <laughs> that was a big night. The, the 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 other one, just as big, was. Lipscomb and us tied in 2006 for the Atlantic Sun Championship. Right. We went to Johnson City, and we both made the championship game. So we faced our boulevard rival about five hours away, and um, and and we'd split during the year. We'd tied during the season. We were tied at the end of regulation. Uh, Justin Hare made a fantastic driving layup and got fouled and made the. The, the free throw to put it into overtime, and we win the game in overtime. Your first trip to the NCAA yeah. tournament, and to win it in that kind of mm -hmm. a way, mm -hmm. uh, pretty unforgettable. Over your arch rival, there. That that one of your favorite students now is coach of uh, assistant coach here for a long time, Casey Alexander. Is he now, is. It's gonna make it harder to cheer against him. Isn't it? <laughs> it is going to. That's it right. is going to. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna be. I'm going to be four lips, uh, except maybe a couple of times a year. <laughs> well, I'll cheer for Casey. Do I have to cheer for lips? Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe I can, maybe yeah. I can do well, that. I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, Rick, we, we thank you for your time, man. Oh, you thank you quite for an inspiration. Appreciate you were it. You quite an inspiration to me and Thanks. a lot of people in the well. Middle Tennessee area. Well, I hope you enjoyed our time with Rick Bird. I know I did. Uh, I hope you paid a, uh, attention to a couple of things that he said. One, it's important that you know where you belong, your yes. Uh, some of the opportunities that we thought would have been good opportunities for Rick that we would have understood, maybe even encouraged him to take, he knew would not, was not the right place for him. Because of that, he's been able to stay at Belmont for 27 years and make a significant impact in the lives of the young men he's coaches. Did you hear him talk about how he continued to grow and develop as a coach from NAIA to where he is now uh, in the NCAA? Once you find your yes, you have to keep growing and developing. One yes does not fit all, and your yes will keep changing and developing as the Lord learns to trust you with more and more. So I hope you enjoy this time. We'll look forward to seeing you back, and that's MyGlennOnline.com. I'd love to hear your comments. Thank you.